So let's see how to maximize efficiency. Recall that pumps have efficiencies, normal efficiencies run between maybe 50 to maximum 90 percent. Those are common pump efficiencies. And efficiency is very important because it's going to tell us how is our pump uh, behaving with respect of what head do I, I am giving, what volumetric flow rate I'm operating, and how much pump uh, pumping power is required. So I have this question, what is the point of having a very nice pump which you think it's very powerful and has a lot of uh, advantages, it's, it's very flexible and, and volumetric flow rate, but the efficiency that is working right now is 50%. So the other 50% will be wasted, but we will still going to be paying that because it's electricity. And even though it's very nice, it's going to cost us a lot of money, so we want to improve that. How can we maximize the efficiency of this pump? Well, the good thing is that our uh, supplier is going to calculate the efficiency. It's going to see how much electricity does that pump expend and how much mechanical power does that pump give. And one, this is actually a qualitative measurement of quality and performance. If we have Remember that we have this line right here, which is the typical pump curve. If we have it so to the left, we will go, we're going to have not so favorable conditions. For example, we're going to have uh, temper, temperature rise, we're going to have no, noisy operation. We even, due to the temperature rise, we may even have cavitation. We're going to operate with this with high vibration, which is not good for all the bearings. So the bearings is going to have a not so high life. Once we start going through the right to the best operation point, we're going to see that it's better. A, we're going to have a better impeller life. There's not going to be so high or drastic temperature changes. It's not going to operate that noisy. And then we achieve the best point, operation point, which is typically here. It's the best efficiency point and we're going to have, of course, less noise. All noise depends on the malfunction of all the materials and equipment, devices. Temperature rise, since we are going to use it mainly to produce work, we are not going to produce that much heat energy. So the temperature rise is relatively uh, small compared with this one right here. And eventually I just keep going to the right you're going to see that once again we are going to achieve cavitation or even this once again noisy operation, cavitation, high vibration and so on. So the best thing to do is to find the best efficiency point and stick to this. For example different diameters right here these are different curves of the same pump and as you can see there's always a general area in which you're going to have the best efficiency. So as you can see, I always told you that this point is near this. Well, this is true for this. You have here, here. All these area of curves have the best efficiency. So in the diagram, we're going to see these little curves that will tell you the efficiency. Normally, as you go away of the point of best efficiency that I told you, the efficiency will decrease. So let's do, see an actual one here, it tells you 60%. So why 60%? Well, maybe the design of this, of this pump, does, it's impossible maybe to keep, I don't know, maybe 70 or 80% will be impossible. So when you're choosing pumps, you can see directly what is the maximum operation efficiency. So in this case it will be 60, you will probably don't want this, or maybe this is the only one available or near your possibilities of money and so on. Of course, it depends on many other criteria. And yeah, essentially, as the diameter increases, the operation point of efficiency goes easier to find. So we got the 74, we got the 73. So this will be the best efficiency. Uh, area or zone or range so you want to operate near this the good thing is that in this case we can operate all these size of diameters
another real life diagram, well, we have 73%, and as we go away, 70%, 65%. So, of course, you want to work in this area. And what does that mean? Wait for it. No, I don't have it. So, what does this mean? Is that if you want to operate in very high conditions, you need this uh, condition of efficiency, you need these volumetric flow rates 160 to these 200 gallons per minute. We are still working and talking about this. We, later, we're going to see that this will be our operation point when you cross the system curve and the pump curve. This point right here is where you're going to operate. And as you can see, the operation line is between 70 and 72 percent. I think it's relatively considerably okay. And yeah, that was a little bit on theory. Let's do some exercises. Yo guys, you want to learn a little bit on the mechanical energy equation, how to get that equation? Well, go and check out block number one. You will be able to have a little review on basics before actually understanding why we need the mechanical energy equation. Why is there kinetic energy, pressure head, potential head, what's inlet and outlet work, and a little bit introduction to friction loss. And eventually some applications or common applications of the mechanical energy equation. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course, the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you were for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.